Okay, in this video we'll talk about how to get from a uh, solid model to a multi-view drawing. So we'll also get into some of the basics of solid modeling. So let's go ahead and jump in. I'm going to go ahead and we'll go ahead and create this part. We'll go ahead and create this solid model. As you can see, as I flip this thing around here, you can move it, you can turn it. You can set it up using this cube to see it as an isometric view. I can also hold down F4 on my keyboard and I get to free orbit. If I hold down my left mouse and move my mouse, you can see free orbit. You can also grab the free orbit tool over here and then move this thing around. So let's go ahead and move through some of the basics of how to set up and create this part. And you can also see this is the part that is visible in the CAD uh, slides here for getting started with solid modeling. So let's go ahead and get started. So to get moving here, we're going to hit file and hit new and then from this create new file we have several different types of files first we want to be on the en us this is the uh, us english standard this is in inches and when we come across here we have two different files so these are part files and of course we have assembly files and then drawing files and then down here we have presentation files so the part files are each individual part if you look this is an individual part on my screen there and then if we're going to make an assembly, you have parts that come together. These little cubes coming together make an assembly. And then, of course, this is a multi-view drawing of that assembly. Okay, so you can see the three, three views there. So what I'm going to do is start with a standard IPT. I'm going to select that, hit Create, and it's going to go ahead and create a drawing file, or I should say a modeling file. So from this point, everything starts with a 2D sketch. So I'm going to go ahead and select my 2D sketch tool. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select one of the planes. Now everything functions on planes and again if I hold down F4 I can turn and show you these are simple um, glass planes if you will that we can draw on. You can also see the cube over here turning as I turn these uh, planes. Now it's not necessarily uh, important at this point to say we're going to start drawing from the back or the front or the right because this can all get changed and really it's based upon how you lay out the part onto your sheet and how it's going to function. So what we want to do is we want to mouse over the edge of one of these planes after we have actually grabbed that 2D sketch tool, mouse over the edge of a plane, and then left click. That goes ahead and puts you into a standard sketch mode. Okay. Notice the ribbon bar has changed and we have some tools up here. Here's our line tool, circle tool, arc, rectangle, and these function very, very similar to AutoCAD. But some of the things that I want you to take note of is we also have constraints. Constraints are our friend, but you have to understand how they work. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and model this particular part. And if we're going to model this part, um, we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the dimensional information here on the multi-view drawing. And what we can see here, I'll actually jump into here and look at it a little bit larger. What we can see here is this part is five inches by five inches. And it's one inch thick for this bottom section. So that's what we're going to start. Then we'll add these two pieces onto it. All right, so we'll start with a five by five and one inch. So when I come back here into Inventor and I get back into my part, we need to go ahead and create a rectangle that's five by five. So we could grab our line and we could just go ahead, click and pull, and then we could type in five and hit enter. We could come down and hit five and hit enter and then keep moving our way around. So this is one way we can certainly do it. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Another way that we could do it, hit delete here, is to grab the rectangle tool. And then I can just click and start pulling, and you can see my two dimensions. I can type in five, hit tab, and hit five, and then hit enter, and then I have a five by five rectangle, very similar to in AutoCAD. Now, the other thing I want you to take note of is all these symbols popping up around my rectangle. This symbol right here, this is the perpendicular symbol. Here's parallel, and parallel, parallel, and then, of course, this is a horizontal constraint. So I'm going to hit escape to get out of my tool there, uh, my, my rectangle tool, and I'm going to mouse over and click on the line. Well, once you click on that line, those are the constraints that are already automatically applied to these lines. So as you start mousing over and clicking on things, you can start to see constraint relationships that are being applied to other lines. Now that's important to recognize. So we now have what is also known as a closed loop. Okay, we have a line that goes all the way around and links up. Okay, another example of a closed loop would be a circle. Okay, that's a closed loop. 
but we have a closed loop. So that's important to recognize that, all right? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and now we're gonna hit finish sketch, zoom out, and we're gonna extrude this loop. So when I mouse over that, grab the extrude tool, it already finds the loop, and right now the default is one inch. Well, I'm gonna take a look back here at my 3D model, or my, and it's up one inch is the extrusion, all right? So we'll get back into my part. Go ahead and grab the extrude tool. It's extruding, one inch is set for the distance, and I hit OK. So with that set up in place, what I'm gonna do is I wanna turn my part a little bit and then say, now we're ready to start extruding some pieces off the top. And if I go ahead and dive back into our uh, presentation here, you can see this object sticking up off the back here. All right, this looks like it's uh, 2.5 in uh, one direction, 2.5 in the other direction. And if the total height is three and this is one, that means this is a two inch extrusion. So I know the information I need now, so I can go back into Inventor and get back here into my part. And I can grab a 2D sketch, place it on this top face, and then I can go ahead and create another rectangle. Now this rectangle, if I mouse, grab the rectangle tool, mouse over this corner point, wait till you get that little green lock. The little green dot pops up when it's locked on. Click and just pull. You don't need to hold the mouse down to do it. And as you come out, you can see you have two different dialog boxes here. I'm gonna type in 2.5 and then I'm gonna hit tab, jumps to the other dialog, 2.5, and then hit enter. And that makes it jump to 2.5 by 2.5. All the constraints are set. This is in great position, so we'll hit finish sketch grab my extrude tool, and then mouse over the extrusion. You can see it's coming up. And I can go ahead and pull this thing up if I want or push it down. Okay, there's a few ways we could do this. All right, so I'm gonna pull this up. And then in this position, I'm just gonna go ahead and say distance. I'm gonna type in 2.0 and hit enter. And there you go, we have our object. So now we're ready to go ahead and add this last little section here. So I'll go back here to my presentation and see that we got this little bump here, it's 0.5. Looks like it comes 0.2 this way, and it must go over by 2.5 here. So we'll go ahead and draw that in. So we'll go back out of here, exit out of there, jump back into the inventor, start 2D sketch, go ahead and place it on the face again. And then this time we'll grab our rectangle tool again, and we're going to click and pull over till it sees that point. It grabs that line a little bit, start coming down. So the 2.5 is set, so hit tab to jump into the other dialog. 2.0, hit enter finish the sketch and now we're ready again to grab the extrude tool this time we're not going up two inches we're only going up 0.5 so we type that in and it sets itself into position now our part would be finished but some things i want to show you is we can also not just build but we can cut so if i grab a 2d sketch and let's just say i put a sketch on this face then i want to go ahead and just go ahead and just sketch in some other geometry all right, I could just draw some lines in. And as long as I have a closed loop, they don't even have to be square. I can hit finish sketch. I can then hit the extrude tool. And now it wants to build. The sort of default concept is build. But if I actually hit this button, this is flipping the relationship. Notice that this Boolean uh, operation turns from joining to cut. All right, let me go back to up and you can see it wants to join, making more, making more material. Or if I go to cut, it's trying to go up, but there's nothing to cut. So you have to flip it so there's material to cut. Then you can see it's actually going to cut out this chunk here. All right, so I'll go ahead and hit OK. Now I have a hole. So I can go ahead and cut pieces out. All right, now this extrusion, all right, is actually extrusion number four. If I just select, right-click on extrusion four and hit delete, it says, do you want me to get rid of the sketch? Additionally, delete, consume sketches and features. Well, the consume sketch is the sketch four that's driving it. Well, let's just say instead of deleting it, let's get in and edit sketch four. Right click, edit sketch, I'm back in the sketch mode. I'm gonna pan over that and hit delete. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw a circle instead. Finish the sketch. It says accept, say yeah, I wanna go into this and I wanna edit the feature, find the new feature, it's still in the flipped mode with the Boolean cut and hit OK, and you can change things. So you can see it's completely editable, okay? You can change and edit and really work back and forth with your part to see what you want to do and change, okay? So if we back here and say extrusion three, this is the wrong size, I can jump out here, hit the little plus symbol, go to extrusion three. 
I can select sketch three, right click on it and hit edit sketch. If I change this geometry, we'll go ahead and change this to be 1.5, hit enter, it shrinks, finish sketch, whoop, it finds it and it updates. Okay, so it's very editable. So I don't want to do it, so I'm going to undo that with my undo button right here at the top of the screen. That takes me back to normal. I don't need this circle on here, or this hole, I should say. So I can go ahead and select Extrusion 4, right-click and hit uh, Delete right there. And it says, should I also delete that sketch? Consume sketches. Yup, get rid of that too. So now we're back to our finished part. So now that part is finished. We can see that we have modeled it. It's in great shape. Now we're ready to save it. So we'll do File, we'll do Save As, and we would save this to our TechEd server obviously, but this time we're just going to save this and we'll just call this um, intro part and actually do all caps. Okay, so we're going to save this out and now we're ready to set this up on a title block. Now, this is also a really, really neat aspect to solid modeling. So you can see this multi-view drawing here. This multi-view drawing was created uh, by looking at this part uh, where the solid modeling program just looks at the part and then it actually lays this out for you. So let's talk about how to go ahead and actually get a basic solid model uh, multi-view drawing. So we'll come up here to File. We'll come down here to New. Slide over and we're going to come down here to Drawings. Now I want you to use the IDW file extension standard IDW. Go ahead and select that and then hit Create. And This is going to open up a basic IDW file for Inventor. And if you zoom in down here at the bottom with your roller ball, you see it's a D size sheet. This is a big sheet, okay? Um, we don't need this, we need an A size. So to change that, we're gonna click on sheet one. That's a left click, then a right click. And then you come down to edit sheet. And we'll change that D size to be an A size right away, all right? Hit okay, and you can see now the title block takes up a tremendous amount of space. So we're just gonna get rid of that for now. So we'll right click on this and hit delete. So we get rid of that title block. Uh, if you can't see that title block, hit that little plus symbol and it'll show that title block, okay? So now we're ready to lay something out. We'll go on the sheet, we'll go hit base view and our part pops up because it's still open. If it's not open, all right, you're, you shut down and restart or something to do it. Then you hit this little file uh, search button and it takes you into your parts. I'm gonna grab that intro part that I just saved and I'm gonna hit open. And I can see that it pulls my part up for me. And I can see right now this is telling me that's front view. The cube and the, what it's telling you here, it doesn't matter a whole lot. You want to pick the view that you want to use for the front view. Notice I'm just flipping this thing around by hitting those little arrows, okay? So I'm going to flip it around. I want this to be my front view because this gives me the most information about the profile of the part. I'm going to slide over to about this area, set it up there. I'm going to move my mouse up here to the top, left click. Come back over the front, move over here to the right side, left click, and then I'll come up here to my ISO area. Notice it's projecting from the ISO, left click. Then I'm going to come back over and hit OK. Well, that's all set and good. So I can see that, oh, and look, they're all linked up together. I can't pull away from the alignment on these parts. So just like in, in AutoCAD, we want to keep these approximately the same distance apart. That's important. And if for some reason, didn't come up right away and you need to project from this point then you come up here to the word projected you'll click on the projected view you'll mouse over the view you want to project from which would be the front click and pull and then there's your isometric left click right click and hit create and now you can see your isometric view all right so now we're ready to go ahead and add a few dimensions to this part we'll go ahead and grab the annotation tab grab the dimension tool and then we're just looking at selecting lines and notice how easy it is to select lines. You pull out and then you let it lock into a position. So once that locks up into that position, you know you can align the rest of your dimensions based off of those points. So that's fantastic. It helps you to make it nice, neat, orderly rows with all your dimensions. And if you can't grab the full line, don't really want to get the dots. Just grab the edge line, the edge line, and pull out. And I want this to be out here in this third position for dimensioning because I want to go from here to here and then come out and put that in the second position. Don't overlap the dimensions. Keep them in nice, neat, orderly rows. 
between the views, all right? Don't go putting things out here if you don't need to, all right? Keep things organized. And then we'll go ahead and give it some height information. Notice I'm going to give it the overall height information because it's easy for me to take 3 minus 1. I know that's 2, okay? The only other thing I really need to know is what is this height here, all right? That's important to know, that little piece. All right, so as we continue through here, I think we got most, if not all, the information we need on this part. Now, the last thing we can do is show some of the dimensioning or the title block features is if I open up my drawing resources, okay, you can see that I've got sheet formats, borders, title blocks. I'm going to open up that plus on title blocks. And here it says ANSI large, ANSI A. I'm going to select the ANSI A. Whoops. Select the ANSI A, right-click, and hit insert. Once I do that, you can see I get this ANSI A title block. And for now, we're just going to work with this. We'll end up building our own in the first assignment. But for now, this works out just fine. And I want you to take note of there's some information already here where the uh, person who logged into the computer, their name's here, the date, um, the scale is set, and it also says sheet one of one. See how exactly this information being applied automatically can make life a little easier. Now, when we build our title block, I'll jump in and show you that title block. This title block actually pulls information directly from this model and adds things to the sheet. So we'll end up building this in our first assignment. Um, yet this particular title block will work great for the intro. So hopefully you uh, enjoy exploring solid modeling, your first adventure into making a part.